Welcome to the After Chat. I'm Michael. I'm Ellis. And today we're going to be talking about our words and, well, really why they matter. Yeah, it's <laughs> important. Right. It is. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Welcome to the After Chat. Real questions. Real talk. Real life. All right, so I'm going to lead off the questions this time. Okay. Because we we have a unique one to get started, okay? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> if you had to eat a crayon, what color would you choose and why? <laughs> I don't even know. Like, well, I don't know what... I don't know what I'm basing this on. Like, I, w- I would need to have a box of crayons, like, lined up in front of me. And then, like, so I could, like, look at them. Like, I guess I would eat whichever one is the cleanest. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I really think that's the only criteria I have. Like, if if the if the crayon is clean, then that's the one I'm going to eat. The cleanest crayon, regardless of color. Um. Okay. I guess we have our own criteria here. Like, we're not given. <laughs> so, um, I'm hoping... I'll, I would go with the pink one, hoping that it tastes like watermelon flavored. Okay. I mean... Now, now, if we was going with scented markers, uh huh, I'd go with one of the fruit flavored... Or the fruit scented ones, like a watermelon or a strawberry. You'd have no problem eating one of those. <laughs> I mean, no, not really. I <laughs> I mean, I guess I don't want to eat any of them, but since, since we're in the world of make believe and I'm and I'm I'm eating a marker or a crayon. Um, Crayons are digestible. No way. They're not either. They're yes. wax. Yes, you can't eat a marker. <laughs> People have been eating plastic from from time immemorial. What well, we got, Lenny in here? No, no. I was just going to ask: Is the paper on or off? That's a good question. That's true too. Also digestible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm if in the event that I needed to eat one of these things, I would I would pick the marker that smelled the best, okay, or the mar- or the crayon that was the cleanest. Apparently, crayons are digestible, so I'm not I'm sure how crayon, true that is. And I'm going with the pink one, hoping it tastes like watermelon. That's my answer. Final I'm, answer. I'm not sure how true that is, but we'll figure that out, and we'll we'll circle back <laughs> on whether or not a, a crayon is is in fact digestible. All right. How would you rate your communication skills? Uh, are we doing like out of ten? Like, what are we doing? Yeah, I'd, out I'd, of ten. Yeah, let's go out of ten. I'd go with uh, I'd go with like a seven and a half. Okay. Um, I think the problem is I can be a little too direct sometimes, if anything. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna get across what I need to get across, whether it's you know, in a way that's, you know, good and loving and caring for somebody 100 percent of the time. Yeah. I could do some work. I think that's probably where I, I'd give myself a, a somewhere in the seven area as well. Um, I'm pretty good at, at identifying like how I'm feeling mm-hmm. about something and then and then communicating that. But I don't always know necessarily what to do with that feeling in the moment. Mm-hmm. So like I can be like, yes, I'm angry, and these are all of the reasons why. Yeah. But I, I'm frustrated, and I still don't want to. I still don't know what to do with it. Yeah. And then like if I'm in. Once you get into that contentious like area with somebody, like I'd naturally begin to speak louder. But it's <laughs> yeah. not necessarily because I'm like that has nothing to do with like my level of anger or frustration. It's just once things get hot, mm-hmm. my volume goes up. Yes. And then I don't want it to come back down because like <laughs> so on in some level I'm like if I if I calm down first and my volume goes down first, then like I almost lost the fight. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know? I'm sure I'm not the only person that can relate to that. But uh, but I would give myself somewhere in the low, low sevens. Okay. All right. Most ridiculous lie you ever told as a child. Uh, I'm going to change my answer because, well, I didn't give an answer. I guess I'm going to change the question <laughs> because the, I, I don't have one better than this one. Okay. okay. This weekend, my, my wife and I babysat for her sister's kids. We said they were going to a party like in the evening. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we asked their oldest, the, uh, their daughter, who is 10, what time are you supposed to go to bed? And she danced around the question a couple times, but finally she settled. When she finally gave an answer, she settled on, oh, 9, 10. And we were like, oh, like 9 or 10. She was like, okay. no, 
nine ten p.m. Like that exact time, <laughs> we were like, "No way!" Like, no, it must be eight because you we must be messing with us. Like, mm-hmm. there's no way it's nine ten. What mm-hmm. is that? So that's the best one I've heard in a while. Okay, I really don't. I really couldn't think of like one that was just ridiculous and silly. I know, I know. I remember one time someone at school said that they like this was like way young elementary school, and someone had said that they were allergic to to something, and that that was why they couldn't eat it. Uh huh. And so like whenever I went home and like my mom had made something that had pickles on it, I was like, I think I'm allergic to pickles now. Nice. And like she's like. <laughs> You're not though. So I mean, like, it's like you can say you just don't like them, but like I know for a fact you're not allergic to them. You know, so I, I did th- that. that was probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever. I, I said as a child like that was a lie. I did that. Now that you mention it, I I I said it to the other kids at school though, so mm-hmm. they didn't think I was a weirdo for just not liking whatever the thing was, like mayonnaise or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do I you did not that. like mayonnaise? I don't like mayonnaise. Really? Uh, yeah, mayonnaise is gross. What? Yeah. Wow! Come at me. Okay, I'm ready. I'll, I'll come. At, have you, have, like, okay, have you tried it as an adult? Because there was things that I did not like as a kid, but now that I love as an adult. So, have you like had mayonnaise as an adult? I've had it as an adult. Still didn't yeah. like it. No, nah, it's one of the worst things ever when you like order a sandwich somewhere <laughs> and it's like pre-slathered with mayonnaise. I'm like, bro, like why? Oh, we why? Got, we got Lenny. What about du- have you tried Duke's mayonnaise? I've yeah, tried them Duke's. all. Yep. Duke's is the bomb, man. There. Eh. <laughs> so like I like I like putting mayonnaise and ketchup on the same thing. Uh-huh. So like I had like we did we we roasted hot dogs the other day me and the girls. Yeah. And so like I like putting ketchup and mayonnaise on my hot dog or on a burger. Like it's fantastic. You ought to try it with that. Uh, that might be that might be a behind the scenes. Gonna, uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> for for the after chat I'll do it. I guess. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um oh, we do have an update here. Okay. Sarah dropped it in the doc. Crayons are generally made from wax and coloring. The ingredients are considered non-toxic and most cases will not require medical attention. <laughs> However, if a crayon is eaten, it may cause an upset stomach. Additionally, crayons can be a choking hazard, just like any toy that can fit into a child's mouth. So I'm not going to die, which you just is might, good enough for me. You might you might get sick. Okay, I can deal with that. I, I mean, I hope... I mean, God willing, I'm never in a situation where I'm like, man, I'm going to starve if I don't eat these box of crayons. But at least if we, if if I do find myself in that setting, we'll be okay. Yeah. All right. The worst case scenario is that your tummy hurts. All right, cool. We can we can deal with that. All right. All right. Have you ever said something on so since we're talking about words today? Have you ever said something on social media? That you regretted. Oh, goodness. How much time do we have? Facebook memories might be the worst invention ever. Some of the stuff that pops up from when I was in high school, I'm like, bro, like, why? Who hurt you? Why? (laughs) Why are you doing this? So to directly answer the question, yes, many things. I probably need to go delete all my social media profiles after this, after we're done here. So how about you? So back during the 2000 election, that was like the first one where social media was like a real prominent part of it and i like everybody else at the time that was still getting used to it i did go back and delete all of these like a long time ago (laughs) but i found myself just arguing with for hours with people on a whole host of things it was such a massive waste of time and i wish i could have like i wish i could take all of that time that i wasted like researching things and typing up these massive walls of text and just have them all back like and and do something a lot more worthwhile with it. Like I don't know, planting a tree, <laughs> or, or reading a book, or literally any ten thousand other things that would have been better. Right. So yes, there are things that I've said on social media. Uh, I mean, because you're not going to change. I've never seen where somebody came back and said, "You know what? That well researched, thought out argument that you just presented to me, it really changed my perspective on things." Like, I've never seen it. It's usually yeah. some form of go die, like, comes out at the end of one of those things. So I think, I've uh, never seen anything. I think the general level of self-awareness on social media is pretty, pretty low. low. Pretty yeah. low bar, yeah. So, so. but yeah, there's 1,000% yeah. regretted all of that because it did no good. So do you find it easier or difficult to control your words? I mean, just being authentic I and, and all relationships which we strive for here, that's probably a big struggle of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, I, whenever I get heated or I'm upset or frustrated or uh, I can pop off at the mouth, like I'm 
that that is one thing that I that I do struggle with. Mm-hmm. Like if I if I had to list all of the things that I struggle with, that would probably be right up there at the top. Is watching my mouth once once my emotions start to to get hot. Yeah, I I think I'm the same way. Just in day to day life, it's not really something that's difficult for me to control. But mm-hmm. in certain situations, if you like pull on my heartstrings, um, once I or it's something I'm really sensitive about. Once I get yes. kind of heated about it, then it becomes hard to control. Because I I lose that speak the truth in love. Mm-hmm. Like in those moments, I'm prone to speaking the truth, but not having any love or compassion mm-hmm. with it. Like I just state directly, flatly in a means that can, I mean, if I'm just being real, like that can come across in a mean spirited way. And sometimes, and on my worst days, it that just is what happens. Yeah. It's not what you said. It's how you said it. Kind yes. of deal. Yep, and that I was something you. that my Grammy used to say a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, She's one of two people that have ever called me Mikey. She'd be like, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you say. It's how you said it. And that's why you're in trouble right now. Mm. And I'm, that's a lesson that I still, one of those that you have to learn over and over and over. Yeah, 100%. And, and that's that's where I'm at. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, have you ever said something bold and it paid off? Yes. There was uh, a couple years ago, you know, working here at our church, uh, there was a team that I wanted to be a part of that I was told, no, you can't be a part of this team. And I I tried to sit with it for a week or two and, and just be okay with it, basically, and it, it didn't work. I was not okay with it a week or two later. And so I went and had a meeting about it, and I was like, hey, I just want to know, if you say I can't be on this team, what are the reasons why I can't be on this team? Mm-hmm. And the person sitting across me kind of sat back and was like, you know, I don't know. That's a good question. And I was like, okay, well, let me know when you do. I'm like, I'd be interested to know. Got invited to be on the team the next week. There you <laughs> so, go. So it did pay off. The, all, yeah, all I had to say was, why am I not on there? Yeah. Like, just tell me. Just tell me the reason. So there you go. That was it. That's that's way cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I had, there was a, whenever I was in the military, there was a position that opened up that typically wasn't, um, made available to lower enlisted mm. folks, which I wasn't. It was mostly a, a E5 or above type role. And they, they just said one day, like a formation, like they had the entire unit out there. And they just said, who, we're looking for volunteers to go through this one interview process to be a driver for someone. Well, that was way high up. And and I, I put my hand up mm-hmm. and literally laughs. <laughs> <laughs> from uh, from everybody around me because it was it it's mostly for an NCO yeah um, and I was an E three at the time and but they said okay and, I mean they didn't they didn't say that you weren't allowed to do it but it was just typically a uh, role for an NCO yeah and so but I went through the interview process and uh, I got that role nice and it was. It was really cool whenever I went back, like after I got it and I walked through there and just thinking, y'all laughed, but, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I got it. Um, so that was a, that was a time where I spoke boldly and it actually paid off for, for something really good. Very cool. And we want to hear y'all stories in, in the comments on that, because anytime where we go out and it, and it pays off, it's really, really awesome. Mm -hmm. But I imagine that if I was thinking back through it, there was probably a lot more times where I spoke boldly and it did not pay off. hundred percent. So for this episode, we're going to be uh, uh, here for here. We're going to look at some examples where we've kind of run off at the mouth <laughs> and it did not work out. Yeah. And we're also going to look at some times in the Bible where folks did pop off at the mouth and it didn't really go well for them and other times where it did. Yeah. Um, and then we'll check out a clip from our senior pastor, Brian Hughes. Yeah. So I had a smart mouth whenever I was a kid. <laughs> um, I mentioned that that a second ago and one time like leading up towards christmas i was being a smart mouth Mm -hmm. and they mom and dad asked what i wanted for for christmas and the whole month up to it a box of rocks because they would always say that if santa that if you didn't behave then santa would bring you a box of rocks and i just wanted to test that theory (laughs) and christmas morning came no way. Boom. Box of rocks. <laughs> right there. That was the first present I opened. <laughs> and like all of my other gifts were behind the tree. Uh-huh. But yes, the first <laughs> thing that I opened 
was in fact a box of rocks. That's amazing. Devastated little boy. That's, <laughs> <I was. laughs> that's the kind of parent I aspire to be one day. That is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. What? I mean, looking back, I'm like, wow. Points to mom and dad on that. Like, that's bold. I mean, you, I mean, I said it for an entire month leading up to Christmas, and I actually got it. So, okay. Um, so, yeah. And then another time um, was in the car, like my brothers and sisters and all of us were, we were like being loud and arguing and fighting. And mom, mom said, if you guys don't stop, I'm going to pull this car over. <laughs> and I just said, she, I mean, she had said this hundreds of times before and, mm-hmm. and it never actually, never actually happened. Yeah. For whatever reason, like my first or second grade mouth just said, do it. Oh. And it happened. Like it was, so that's two, that's, those are just two examples of popping off the mouth and it not going really well. We're, we're keeping it real goes wrong as yeah. on the Chappelle show. There you go. Um, what about you? So I really struggled to think of specific examples of when I popped off at the mouth and I, I wasn't so much of a smart mouth kid. I have been a smart mouth adult. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so I really struggled for specific examples. So I, I asked my wife, I was like, Hey, we're going to do an episode on this. I can't think of examples. Can you give me some examples? I, I know you know. Some. And she was like, well, yes, I have some examples, but would you like to know why you don't know the examples? And I was like, sure. Like, I'm all ears. Enlighten me. And she said, it's because you black out when you get frustrated. And I'm like, what? Okay. She said, no, you black out. You go, like, blind rage. And, like, she's totally right now that I think about it because, like, she'll be like, yeah, you said this and this and this. And I'm like, no, I didn't. No way. And I can't like when I when I get to a certain level, it's just like my my memory completely shuts off, and I don't remember. What, what so I said. well, <laughs> I know, right? I can't be held responsible because I don't remember doing it. Okay, I mean, look, you can talk to my wife; she has all the receipts. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so um, okay, and then the like one thing I did think of that I that I tend to do is if I get really heated about something. I'll do what I call a running out of breath rant where you're just talking, talking like it's a wall of words until you're like, <gasps> you take the big deep breath and you're like, <laughs> like, yeah, I, I go there every once in a while. Okay. So. Typically I've, I've heard that referred to as I, I knew somebody that would do that. Like they, they would right before they was getting ready to just really just spew a whole lot of stuff. <sighs> <laughs> like, I mean, it, it, we refer to it as the bull snort. Oh, like, there you we go. would be like, we, that's good. We would be like, oh, dude, check it. He just did it. We're well, here. We go. Yeah. <laughs> got a little red, got a couple of beads of sweat just from like imitating it right there. Oh, my goodness. Whew. All right. Well, those are times where we've, where we've, where we've popped off at the mouth. Um, let's talk about other people. Let's look, let's, let's look at some other folks doing it. Yes. <laughs> What do you got? Yeah. Okay. So I have three. Uh, the first one that turned out pretty well uh, for this person was David when he was getting ready to go fight Goliath. Mm-hmm. He uh, talked some trash about Goliath. <laughs> okay. This is pretty awesome, I think. Uh, it's in First Samuel 17. This is verses 34 through 36. I went with the uh, New Living Translation because it's better trash talk. Okay. Um, so anyways, here it is. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it again. Or I'll do it to this <laughs> I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. There we go. Get smoked, bro. I, oh my gosh. It's awesome. <laughs> I'll do it to this pagan. Watch this. Yeah. That's, like, a, I'm, I'm that's, a, him. that's a hold my beer moment. Right. <laughs> like for what's what. um, that's awesome. Oh, man. That's one of my favorites. Uh, so same guy, different example. This did not turn out well for David. This is after the story of David and Bathsheba, which you can read in 2 Samuel 11 if you haven't heard before. But... Um, The prophet Nathan is basically here to call out David for what he's done. So this is 2 Samuel chapter 12, uh, starting in verse 5. uh, Oh, some background. Um, So Nathan, he's a prophet. He's gone to David after David's committed this egregious sin. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uses a parable, much like Jesus, Jesus does often, to kind of illustrate to David 
where he's messed up. So the yes. parable he uses is he talks about a rich man who has all these animals at his disposal and a poor man who has one lamb. And the rich man, instead of being happy with everything he has, he takes this poor man's one lamb, his one prized possession. So uh, David hears this story, and in, in verse 5 he says, David, it says, David was furious. As surely as the Lord lives, he vowed, any man who would do such a thing deserves to die. He must repay four lambs to the poor man for the one he stole and for having no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are that man. I'm talking about you, bro. The Lord, the God of Israel, says, I anointed you king of Israel and saved you from the power of Saul. I gave you your master's house and his wives and the kingdom of Israel and Judah. And if that had not been enough, I would have given you much, much more. Why then have you despised the word of the Lord and done this horrible deed? For you have murdered Uriah the Hittite with the sword of the Ammonites and stolen his wife. From this time on, your family will live by the sword because you have despised me by taking Uriah's wife to be your own. This is what the Lord says. Because of what you have done, I will cause your own household to rebel against you. I will give your wives to another man before your very eyes, and he will go to bed with them in public view. You did it secretly, but I will make this happen to you openly in the sight of all Israel. Man. I mean, that's, that's, that's speaking bold right there from, from Nathan, and that ended up being David's son, Absalom, who, yeah. who, did the, who carried out the last thing there at the end. But, no, I... Who did this? And just holds up a mirror. <laughs> it's like, bro, you. He's talking about you. Come on. You know, I ha- I got a little I got a little of the out of breath rant reading that. Okay, all right. This one's shorter. So okay. Peter infamously pops off when Jesus is arrested. Uh, it's in Matthew twenty six, verse fifty. Jesus said, "My friend, go ahead and do what you have come to do." Talking to Judas, who's getting ready to uh, turn him over. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him, but one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. So, doesn't even, like, pop off. I, I, this is I, it's like a little bit of a stretch example. It doesn't yeah. even pop off. just goes straight for the sword. and whoosh. He's a brash fellow, that Peter. N- not a whole lot of restraint, <laughs> that guy. So, yeah. No, I, lo- I like this one here, when Elijah's calling down uh, fire uh, for Baal's prophets. So, mm-hmm. like, this was a time where... Uh, Elijah was one of the last few uh, prophets for for the one true living God. And so there's like this big showdown and Baal's got like all these prophets for Baal and Elijah just goes like, okay, we're going to have this like a, like a, like an old Western showdown, like be out there at noon type situation. <laughs> and he's like, go out there. You set up a shrine, uh, an offering for Baal. I'm going to set up a shrine for the, uh, an offering for the one true living God. And go out there, you you call out to your God, and whenever he does this thing, I'll call out to my God, and, and he'll do his thing. And so his time comes, and Baal's prophets have been out there for days and days and days trying to call something down, and nothing's happening. And then Elijah comes in, mm-hmm. and this is 1 Kings 18, 27 through 29. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he's deep in thought or busy or traveling. Maybe he's asleep and must be awakened. So they shouted louder and louder, and obviously, like, nothing happens. But the New Living Translation, the NLT, does say it a little bit differently, and I, and I like that one as well. And at noontime, about noontime, Elijah began mocking them. He'll have to shout louder, he scoffed, for surely he is a god. Perhaps he's daydreaming, or he's relieving himself, (laughs) or maybe he's away on a trip. And I just thought that was, like, that's flexing on him. That's awesome. Because then he had his uh, sacrifice, like, soaked with water ten times over, and then called on God, and God God burned it up and accepted it. But I just thought that was... That's a that's a, just an example of some biblical trash talk. Yeah, um, that's kind of like uh, the David and Goliath one, where like that's the kind of the tr- kind of trash you can talk when you know you're going to win. You yes. know what I mean? And so. then <clears throat> and then here's one back to Peter of yep. uh, someone promising something that they couldn't deliver mm-hmm. on, and I think that's probably something that's more that a lot more people have 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 some experience with and can relate to. Yeah, Peter promises to to be there, and then. Jesus talks about his um, uh, his eventual betrayal of it. Yeah. Uh, so then Jesus told him, this is Matthew 26, 31 through 35. Then Jesus told him, this very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. But Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. 
Jesus knowing. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you'll disown me three times. But, but Peter, never one to be deterred, Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And that's, <laughs> but he wasn't able, but I mean, that's, I think a lot of people, like, their intentions are good. They just get a little, a little ahead of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Peter did there. Now, we looked at some examples of when trash talking went right. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a very funny story of someone trash talk, or of a group of people trash talking and it going just spectacularly wrong. Mm -hmm. So this is second Kings two twenty three 23 and uh, through 25. Now this is Elisha, not mm -hmm. to be confused with Elijah. Elisha came after Elisha. Right. Just, Start stringing all of that together, and it gets really, it, it can be a tongue twister. So, from there, Elisha went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, some boys came out of the town and jeered at him. Get out of here, Baldy, they said. Get out of here, Baldy. It's a weird People thing. don't say that to you, do they? No. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> but, all right. <laughs> um, they've asked why I'm bald, but I've never been jeered and told to flee because I'm bald. Okay, not um, baldy. All right, yes. good. All right. But Elisha turned around, looked at them, called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 boys. And then he went on to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like I, so that's that's an example of when when trash talking just d really does not pay off. I shouldn't have called him baldy. I that's, mean, that's so why you guys stoop so low. Then I mean, you can't control it. Like you think I want this? Like I I I have dreams of my resurrection body. Like I really think that I hope that my resurrection body has my like back in the late '80s whenever I was a boy. Like I had a really awesome mullet. No way. I did. And it had like the little checkered board shaved stuff situation into the sides. It was way cool. Do you have a picture? I do have a picture of that. You know what to do. Okay. Um, but like, <laughs> I hope that my resurrection body has a head of hair like that. But no, I just thought that was, that's when, like, what is that curse? Like he didn't, I wish we, I wish he, they had written what the curse was. Yeah. But it would have been too much power for one person to have if you had that, <laughs> if you had those words wow. at your disposal. Um. <laughs> But I also wanted to look at one where where being really bold and speaking boldly mm -hmm. uh, worked out well. Now, this is uh, Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego. So Nebuchadnezzar, he has this statue erected and tells everybody to bow down to it. And these three guys, they just weren't going to do it. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to develop the, to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hands. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of God you have set up. Hmm. That's bold, bold, bold right there. That's pretty awesome. And that was an example of it paying off. Yeah. So... You know, but there's the Bible's just got a ton of of advice for us on how we actually conduct ourselves with our words. Now, those are just examples of of people being bold and it paying off, people being jerks and it not paying off, and just kind of everything in between. And just, but we just wanted to look at some examples of some things that are kind of comical. Some of them are kind of comical, like the Bears one. I think is kind of silly <laughs> and or kind of comical, and then, you know, maybe your God's up there relieving himself, <laughs> and that's why he's not accepting your offering. Um, but the Bible does have a lot to say uh, to us about how we uh, use our words with, and, uh, and, how we, and how we talk. Yeah. Uh, one that really jumps out to me that I find, Ephesians 4, 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for, for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. I I really once I started looking at at how I talked and how I spent my time like for me that really talked I really lean into that as far as like gossip is concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, I find that to be most applicable there. Yeah. I don't know if that's ever I I mean I'm a very curious and I mean nosy um person. So whenever I first started coming to God and I started like really looking at how I interact and conduct myself 
I like gossip. Like I, I mean, I like hearing. I like I like just knowing things. Yeah. So I found, but not everything is really any of my business. Mm-hmm. So I generally now, if that starts going on, I'll just kind of remove myself from the situation because if we're just going to sit around and trash talk people, like I don't really want to be a part of it. Right. So yeah, I don't know. That was one example of something that really changed the way that I think about how I use words or how I even receive words because we can control for in most instances, what we actually hear as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Matthew 12, uh, 36. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. Just kind of goes back to that. Like if you're just sitting around like just bashing people or just talking about people, not for any kind. I mean, there's sometimes where you do have to talk about someone's poor behavior, but are you doing it to, are you having that conversation and thinking about a way to help them course correct? Or are you just tra- trash talking? Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a big difference between the two. That one might kind of encompass that what we're talking about better than any of the rest of them we're going to talk about. Like the, what you say, I mean, quite literally what you say matters. It's not yeah. something you throw away, you know, at the end of every day, like it matters for the arc of your life on this side of heaven and yes. beyond. So. And it impacts, I mean, the words that you say, we're going to, look at it here in a little bit uh, as part of the message and um, and just what James said, like our words, they have the power to build up or they have the power to kill and destroy. Yeah. And um, but and then the last one that I had was Matthew 15, 18. But the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and those that defile the man. Yeah. So whenever I am on my worst and I or you go you, to your blind rage, <laughs> like those are I mean, once you once you get on the other side of it, that gives you an opportunity to think and reflect on, gosh, I really did not handle that well. Mm-hmm. And that requires a level of just being honest with yourself and just have that brutal self-honesty to say, I sucked right there. Mm-hmm. And I can do better. And I'm capable of doing better. But not through my own power, but through the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. Yeah. So those are just some things that, some verses on the subject that help me whenever I'm thinking about this. Yeah. Well, I have a couple more, uh, and the first one is really similar to that last one you had from Matthew. It's from the book of Luke, uh, it's chapter 6, starting in verse 43. Uh, it says, No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree, each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Mm. And that's, that's one that really I think about a lot and just sit with a lot because if something that's coming out of my mouth that shouldn't be, or it's getting typed out with my thumbs, that shouldn't be. It's, it is about that, but it's also about where's the source of that. And Mm. that stuff is coming from my heart. And so I'm constantly trying to examine and remind myself to examine like where, where is this coming from in my heart and what can I do? to to correct it yes um so yeah that's one and then another one uh is in colossians uh chapter 3 starting in verse 12 um therefore as god's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone forgive as the lord forgave you and over all these virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity i think we talked about this um, a little bit in our, might have been our very first episode. Mm-hmm. We talked about outrage. Um, we don't have to essentially let our, our mouths and our hearts be on autopilot. And just whatever situation we get drawn into, let that dictate what we say and how we act. We can choose what we what we show people with our hearts, with the, the words we speak, and how we treat them. We can choose that. We can choose to communicate good things and clothe ourselves with good things instead of just being controlled by the negative things that are a lot easier to take over. So do you think a lot of that has more to do with like, cause he's, we, we look at those verses and it, and it references uh, the stuff that's in your heart. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking here, maybe a lot of what, I mean, we have, we have, we have the ability to control what actually goes into our hearts and what we focus on. So if what we're focusing on is is good and lovely and beautiful and true and all of those things then what's coming out of it Mm -hmm. so i'm i don't know i'm just trying to connect trying to connect some dots about what's going into our heart and then what's coming out of it 
I think this is for me. This is a lot about our culture, and our culture kind of glorifies a lot of the stuff we were talking about earlier, which is, you know, the open season comment sections. Yes. And uh, you know, I, I think I said it before one time, but every almost every show that you pull up on YouTube or whatever that looks like this with two people sitting at a table is like a debate. They're usually show. arguing. Yeah, they're yeah. arguing about something. <laughs> so, like, I think making the conscious conscious decision of like. I'm not going to consume yeah. so much of that stuff that it becomes what is constantly being poured into here. Because a lot of the stuff that comes out, especially in those moments where where things get heated mm-hmm. and frustrated, I mean, a lot of that is just stuff that's been floating around in your subconscious or deep down in the recesses that's now finally got an opportunity to come out. Mm-hmm. So the more that we fill ourselves with stuff that's good and, and, and true and honest and beautiful and all of those things – then the less of it comes out whenever things get heated and stressed. Right. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud there. Yeah. Uh, um, but we do have something that our senior pastor, Brian Hughes, has uh, here to tell us about our words and how they matter. Yeah. Check this out. Words carry incredible power and weight to help and to heal, to wound and to maim, to breathe life or to hinder it. We're surrounded by words. But the only ones we can control are the ones we possess. So use them well. Use the power of the words that God gave you to do good. And not only will it will the people around you receive those words and it will be a win for them, but because you know you're using that power to build people up, you win too. You know, words really do have the power to to maim and heal like you referenced there. And to... He, in that message, which I hope you all uh, take the time to check out, he makes the point how there's two sets of words that are really difficult for a lot of people to say. One is, uh, one set of words is, I love you. Mm -hmm. And then the other set of words is, I am sorry. And I know that there's been more than a few times where after I've run off at the mouth, where it's... You, you need to be able to say, listen, I'm I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I got that wrong. And that's not a sign of of weakness or, or anything. It's it's a sign of like just recognizing what you did yeah. and trying to and trying your best to make amends for it. Yeah. I think one of the reasons it's so hard is because you you're giving something to somebody else without any guarantee of anything in return. Yeah. You're like you're giving them you're communicating to them, I love you. You're communicating to them that you're sorry. You're communicating your remorse. And they might accept it. They might return it. They might not. That's totally yeah. up to them. But you're making a decision to do what you feel like you need to do. Yeah. And I think that's why it can be tough. So. I think I would – I would. there's another set of words. So, like, in a lot of my – you know, I, I reference on some of my teams – the those two sets of words but i also add one that says i don't know Mm, yeah that's a good one (laughs) which is you know that's also something because you can run off at the mouth and do a lot of damage pretending that you know something (laughs) that uh, or are able to do something that you have no clue about doing Mm -hmm. um but i that's that's the other only set of words that i would add to that is i don't know i am sorry and i love you yeah and there's been times where on some of the teams i'm lead where someone will just throw them all together Listen, I don't know how to do that. I'm really sorry. I wish that I did, (laughs) but I love you. (laughs) That's awesome. That's good. Um, Closing thoughts on on this, and what what were some of your takeaways? Yeah, uh, well, I think the main thing is just that words, they're not uh, not a passive thing. They're not a throwaway thing. They're not a basic means of communication. They have power, like in a good way and in a bad way, Mm -hmm. depending on how you use them. And um, I think just appreciating and – Remembering the value of them is is important for all of us. Yeah, and the only other thing that I would add is you need to be able to tell people that you're sorry mm-hmm. if you, whenever you do make that mistake. It really, I think, I think it, it's okay to admit that you've done wrong. Yeah, and a lot of people just really, really struggle with with that. And and Hughes does a great job of outlining that in the rest of the message, which I hope everybody checks out. Yeah. So. I I thought this was a good episode. Yeah, this was good. And so check us out on social media. Find us in our Facebook group. We weren't sure how big these mugs were (laughs) in our last episode. So 
we wanted to we wanted to find out yeah. exactly how I said 15.7 you did you uh pulled that number from nowhere I I you know you never know <laughs> and so I just took a random guess yeah so but we do have if you could grab that yep. this is 16 ounces just a little over 16 ounces we're going to find out how much this holds oh It's at least 15 ounces. Holy smokes, is that at the rim? It's really close. All right. Oh. All right, that's oh. at the that is at the <laughs> rim just at the event horizon of of this mug. All right, so that's that's I was pretty close to 15.7 to me. Yes. So, it's a, it I think that is 15. We're going to say 15.7 at least 15 ounces. So, that's the size mug you'll get whenever if you leave us a review and we read it here on the air. And we hope that everybody enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you next week. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for The After Chat. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To be the first to hear our next episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button and get notifications for new content. You can also follow us on social media on Instagram at PCC Wired and Facebook at Passion Community Church. For additional resources and links, check out the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on The After Chat.